Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and today we're taking a look at this ink, or one very close to this ink. This is from a new line of inks from Pilot, the Suwario line of inks, which are pigmented and intensely colored and all that. This is the box for the blue-black. We are not looking at the blue-black today, and you can see this is an empty box. I don't have a bottle of this. Rather, I have a sample of the blue and also the black one uh, from a viewer named Chad. So thank you very much, Chad, for sending these out. These are not available in the US, so I haven't gotten my hands on them yet. And uh, Chad was nice enough to send out the box for the blue-black one, so that's very cool of them. So you can see, you know, what, what it looks like. Uh, these come in a 30 mil bottle, and I have found these on Stilo and Stile and maybe a couple of other places, but they're not widely available right now. So they're a little bit on the hard, hard to find side, but hopefully they'll be coming to the US soon. These come in, as I said, a 30 mil bottle, and you'll see there's not really much English going on in the back of this bottle, or this box rather. It does say Con 40, Con 70, and 95 here. This, I think, is a bunch of warnings, and we'll see what those warnings are about here in just a couple of minutes. So, there's the box, put that away. Here's what it looks like in the sample vial. You can see it is intensely uh, pigmented. I mean, look at that color depth. Like, it just coats this. This is a this is an interesting interesting ink. So, let's look at it on some paper. Bam! This is what it looks like on Rhodia 80 grams per square meter paper. And uh, I've had this in the same pen this whole time, which is a Franklin Christoph Model 55 uh, with a medium Yovo nib. Now, the reason I put it in this and not a Pilot is because, as I note here in the written bit, uh, Pilot doesn't recommend using these inks in some pens and that sort of thing. It says don't put it in a Rushi lacquered pens, don't put it in the Custom 823, the Heritage 92, or the Justice 95. Now, I have to imagine the reason for that is that they're wanting to be careful with uh, cleaning and that sort of thing with these pens. I don't know exactly what it would do to a Rushi. I, I'm not going to test that. I have like one Arushi pen and I'm not sacrificing it. So uh, I don't know exactly and I haven't heard anywhere from anyone who does know. The Custom 823 is a vacuum fill pen and so it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's a little bit more of a, a pen in the butt to clean and so maybe they're like, well, don't put it in there because it'd be hard to clean out. This one likewise is a piston fill pen. Not super easy to clean out because you can't really take it apart in an easy way. And so maybe that's that. That. The Justice 95 has a very complicated, like, adjustable nib tension system, and you can't really take that one apart either, so I'm guessing that's what all that is about. So, I put it in a pretty simple uh, filling system, which is just a converter and a nib unit that I can take apart and, like, strip down if I need to. Now, I say the flow here is fairly wet, and uh, that's true. I, <laughs> I'm not lying. It's uh, on the wet side, and it has felt really nice out of this medium number no. 5 Yovo nib. I haven't had any problems with hard starts or... I don't know, weird clogging or anything like that that sometimes people worry about with pigmented ink. There's been no issue of any kind. Uh, there is, I think, a little bit of staining in the converter. Let me see if I can move this up a bit so we can see. You can see there is a slight blue cast inside here. If you compare it to this, like, this part right here it definitely hasn't touched ink. It's clearer. It's not a big deal, but I would also be cautious putting this ink in something that's like a demonstrator or something that might stain. Uh, I would just keep it in pens with like a converter that's opaque. You know, that way you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Because you do get, along with these like warnings and that sort of thing, you do get some great qualities out of this ink. You get a little bit of shading. Not a huge amount, but some, as you can see there in the written samples and over here as well. And I say mild sheen, there's a little bit of a sheen on this ink in some places, I think, but it's very mild. I mean, you can see maybe a little bit here and there, but not a whole lot. But also, it's supposed to be very waterproof and also light fast. So if you wanna write something down that's gonna stay there, this might be the ink for you. We're gonna test this out down here. I haven't tested it beforehand, so I don't really know, but we'll check it out. Performance, a little bit of light bleed on the copy paper. Uh, it's this line right here. You can see uh, this is the Staples 20 pound 30% recycled copy paper. You can see a couple of feathers here and there perhaps, like here in blue, just a little bit. And then on the back, you do get a little bit of bleed through, but this is the worst paper. I mean, everything bleeds through this paper, right? Except for, what is this, party time and a very dry nib. That didn't do anything at all. But everything else pretty well will have some bleed through, and this is just not that bad. So this is the worst paper you're gonna find in your office, and so I'm not really worried about that kind of performance there.
All right. Now, down here in the written section, um, I say this is a, a new line of inks from Pilot. It's pigmented, has a strong color, has strong light resistance. I have not tested the light resistance. So according to the listings online, I haven't had it long enough or done the testing for that. I, I don't have a scientific way to do it. Except for just like write something on a page and put it in a window. And I just haven't done that. We are going to test the water here today. So uh, let's give that a try. Then we'll take a look at the chromatography and some similar inks and some other papers. So let's go ahead and just put water all over this sucker. Don't really want it on my desk though. I'm going to mop that up real quick. Okay, cool. So as expected, I'm seeing no movement. This is looking, this is looking good. I, I do love a pigmented ink. They're often extremely water fast, which is a very cool feature of them. So let's uh, go ahead and mop that up. I'm not expecting to see really any change here to the written bit. Yeah, nothing comes off the paper. There's nothing on this paper towel. And that hasn't budged. And uh, I wrote this this morning. So this is pretty fresh. It hasn't had like a lot of time to bond to the paper or anything like that. But you can see nothing. Nothing going on here. Which is, well, there might be a little smudge right there. But also, like I've got a little bit of ink on my fingers because I've been cleaning pens. So like maybe it came from there or maybe it's from that. But uh, either way, you're not going to have any problem reading this whatsoever. I mean, that is... That is solid water resistance right there, as advertised. Very cool. Okay, so here is the chromatography for this ink, and this is a really interesting looking chromatography. I, I don't know if I've seen anything exactly like this before. The color in this ink is blue, um, and you can see this is where it started out. And there's a little bit down here that seems to have sort of stuck around on that bottom level, and then things kind of got pushed up the chromatography sheet, but... Uh, I mean, there's a lot left here, and like it's it was very reluctant. And you can see the paper or the uh, the water actually kept going up the chromatography sheet, and it just kind of left the ink behind. Like it just stopped moving right there, which is that's an interesting effect, and I don't think I've seen that in a long time. So, Suario so Blue, yeah, very water resistant, and that looks neat. Okay, let's look at that on some other papers. Uh, I have it here in my Inky Fingers currently inked notebook. This is uh, Wheat Straw paper. You can see it is right there. It is a very nice looking sort of medium blue. And uh, I like it. I think it looks really good. Worked really well there. Next up, a Galen Leather Everyday Notebook. This is Tomoe River Paper. And you can see it is right here. Again, nice medium blue. More shading, of course, on this paper. And just a little, <coughs> just a little hint of sheen. Right in there, but not not a whole lot. Don't expect that sheen, but it does look really good on this paper. Let's see if it went through or anything weird like that. No, nothing weird. Nothing weird at all. It looks great. I also uh, wrote out some lyrics to a BTS song on one of these Notco note cards, and it worked pretty well on here. I do get a couple little feathers here and there, just, you know, down here in the this bit for sure, and maybe... We got like up here, the D, like just a little bit, but not much. It's not going through the other side or anything like that. I think that's totally fine. This isn't bothering me at all. All right, let's look at some similar inks. Here it is on the Colodex card. I use these all of the time for ink swatches and that sort of thing. You can find these at well-appointed desk or lots of other vendors' Colodesk. Uh, so there it is, and it looks real nice there. I did have a little bit of problem writing pigmented there. I think a little bit of the ink fell off the end of the uh, the end of the glass dip nib, and that will happen with some wet inks. So I'm not super surprised. That's just kind of a thing that happens. Here it is next to Kaveco Blue, which has a little bit of a purple cast to it, and this has a little bit of a purpleness in it too when you get it in some lights and on some papers. Not very much, but just a little bit compared to some other blues. So I threw that in there. Kaveco Blue is definitely a bit more on the violet side, the blurple side. Then we have here Kobe number 50 which I think is pretty close. Although this one definitely shades a lot lighter and it does have more of an identifiable sheen in here than you're gonna get from this ink. Uh, next up, Visconti Blue. It is quite close to Visconti Blue, although Visconti Blue I think is a lot lighter. It seems to me in the written portions, it's a bit closer to Visconti Blue than it is in the swatches. That's just the way it goes sometimes. And lastly, this is one from Kala, uh, Chiming Lake. I'm not, I don't know how to say that one. I'm sure I'm getting it wrong. Maybe. Uh, but uh, this is from Sugar Inks. And I think this is pretty close. Savario Blue is a little bit, like it's, it's a different type of ink because it's got that pigmented quality. And so you don't have the sort of, you know, 
color switching and that sort of thing to do in here a little bit. You can see what I mean, perhaps. But I think otherwise, fairly similar blue colors there. So there you go. That's Pilot Savario Blue. Thanks very much, Chad, for letting me uh, get a sample of this ink. It's really cool, and I've enjoyed using it a lot. I'm uh, looking forward to using the black and uh, getting a hold of some of that blue black. Um, and at the price, I would just buy all three of these if they came to a U.S. store. So, you know, hit me up if you find this in the U.S. store and uh, leave a comment below. All right, I will see you all later on in the next video. Peace out.